Greetings. I've tried to do another live video and I'm having a lot of problems with live. It doesn't work for me for some reason. Chat doesn't work. I tried, I tried. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do this until a few days until YouTube does their thing. I miss interacting with you guys. I miss you guys. Love you. I, I, uh, this has been a great vehicle for me to actually have friends in a time where it's rather difficult to do so because of COVID. COVID rates have started climbing again in Costa Rica. So uh, guess what? I'm not going anywhere much. I am going out for lunch today because we're going to go to my favorite bake burger joint. That's why I'm wearing old, comfortable clothing. And the burger joint is all open air, so I'm not worried about catching COVID there. It's run by a friend of mine. If you're ever in Tamarindo, go visit the Surf Shack. Brian, the guy that owns it, he does the best burgers you've ever put in your mouth. Everything is fresh. Everything is locally sourced as far as he can get it. The beef he uses is the same beef that I cook with here, which is the Nicaraguan beef that is raised without chemicals and hormones. So it's like mouth-wateringly great. So now I've plugged him for free. Hey, Brian. <laughs> so I just have to say, I'm Suzanne Tittkemeyer. If you don't know who I am, I wrote for Patheos for almost 10 years, a column called No Longer Quivering that looks at things like toxic religion, basically. Um, these are just my opinions on Mother's Day and everything else. If you could do the youtube -y things and hit like, subscribe, I would really appreciate that. Don't bully anybody I talk about here. Please don't. Don't even give them a hard time. You know, I had to stop myself this morning from sending an ugly tweet to the governor of Mississippi after seeing him on uh, Face the Nation, well, not Face the Nation, on CNN. And I was like, why would I do that? So I'm saying that here. Don't bully anybody. Don't be doing that crap. I have to stop myself from it sometimes. And... Um, So that's that's it basically. Just don't bully. Don't bully. Don't be bully. Don't be rude and ugly to anybody. It's really just not worth it in the long run. And so okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about Mother's Day today. It is Mother's Day, so happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and the fathers and the almost mothers and the fur baby mamas and everybody who does mothering, nurturing, supportive type tasks. Everybody. So I wanted to talk a little bit about motherhood. I don't have the best relationship with my mother at all, but it's more a generational thing now and her not understanding my generation, me not understanding her. And sometimes it leads some weird places. Like one time she picked a fight with me because I was talking about I had to get off the phone and collect all the trash in the house to put it out to be picked up the next day. And she started telling me that was my husband's job, not mine. Well, my husband had a long commute from D.C. every single day and would arrive home exhausted. So I went out of my way. We lived in Virginia and he worked all those hours to do everything not to bug him with it because he had enough of a, a task with his job. And she couldn't understand that. In her eyes, trash pickup was gendered. Now, you and I know it's not gendered. Um, so that's a generational thing. And her and I were fundamentally at loggerheads a lot of times because of personality as well. I came out of the womb wanting to do art. And I know I did because at some point very early in my life, I started drawing on the wall with diaper cream and various, whatever I could get my hands on became art supplies to draw on the wall behind the crib. My mother hated that. My father always got a kick out of it though. And my parents didn't have a very good relationship. I think my mother was quite depressed for a lot of my early childhood, at least. And then when my teens, she was busy with her job and with her significant other. So there wasn't a lot left for me at that point. So we didn't have the greatest relationship. We have a better relationship now, but it requires work. I sent her a Mother's Day bouquet. I haven't talked to my children yet today, but I talked to them a long time yesterday, so I'm not upset by that. I'm expecting them to get on with their lives, and my youngest is busy not being bridezilla, but definitely planning her wedding for everything to go a certain way. So there's that. 
and I don't blame her a bit. It's an exciting time when you start planning your wedding and you're just trying to get everything done. Um, I never take my job as mother for granted. When they ask me for stuff, I try to always be as generous as I can without being a pushover. So there's that. So it's, it's a difficult walk. Being a mother, being a daughter, all those things can be hard. And I really wanted to talk about that today a little bit because even when the COVID rate is not climbing, I do not go to Mother's Day services at any church ever, ever, ever again. Why? Well, because at my old fundamentalist church, Mother's Day was always, they always got up the most quiverful women in the congregation to give long, very fake testimonies about how they've been blessed by motherhood. And I knew they were fake because I had heard this one say in women's groups, please pray for me X, Y, Z. So I knew how fake the narrative was they were spinning from the pulpit. And that was probably at the apex of me realizing all the ways my own mother had failed. And I was still processing that and trying to forgive her, which I've gotten there now. And I understand more now about who she is and all of that. So that always helps when you're trying to understand somebody else is to understand what, they're, what, the, what kind of culture they came out of and what the expectations of their family were when they were coming up. All of that plays into that. And my mother was the daughter of a hardcore alcoholic. My grandfather, who was always great to me, was not so great to his children, and he drank away his wages. I've heard horror stories. So we have these ladies, some of which I knew didn't have money to feed and clothe their children properly, getting up there and saying what a blessing it was that God allowed them to have all these children to be a blessing to everyone else. And how much of a blessing it was to homeschool, to bake bread, to stay home, all of that. And I'm sitting there listening to this narrative thinking, this is a pile of baloney. Except I was using dirtier words than that. My mind, not baloney, but you know, the stuff that comes out of the south end of a bull. And uh, the YouTube doesn't like you saying, so I try not to say that sort of thing. And so I don't go to Mother's Day celebrations anymore at church because they're all mostly fake fakery and they don't really take into account those of us that have alternative mothering views who've had bad mothers who are struggling to be a single mother or struggling to be a single father who are struggling with infertility who are struggling with their adopted or foster children there is many types of mothers as you could imagine, but Lori Alexander today tried to say only mothers that give birth are mothers. That's a load of, you know what, cob swallow. When I was in high school, I had the great good fortune to have a really great biology teacher who opened her classroom during lunch, during the lunch hour for anybody who wanted to come hang out. And I hung out many times in her classroom and had my lunch. And she was not just my biology teacher. She was a great human being that happened to just pour into us kids that were hanging out with her. So she was one of those accidental mothers that I've thought about many times now and wondered how, how, where she, how she went. Um, there are others in my life who filled that role through the years. Another one I was thinking about this morning was a lady named Susan that I used to go to church with that filled, kind of was my spiritual mother in the old church. I don't know how she's doing today, um, but she, the last time I talked to her, she was broken and bitter by her children and by the fact that her husband had left her. Susan, I don't know where you are today, but thank you for being a mother to me. And I pray that you come to some kind of peace in your life. Life is too short to carry tons of grudges. To those mothers who are traumatized by motherhood. And there are some, there's one that I know of that I'm not going to say her name. 
that other YouTuber who has said that Mother's Day and her son's birthday is the worst days of her life. I am so sorry. That is not what was intended for you as, as a mother. As a mother, it's okay to burn out when you're taking care of a uh, special needs child. You need time for yourself, too. And the thing is, that type of motherhood doesn't line up with, with the stuff that they're promoting and preaching today about how awesome motherhood is. And it is awesome. But I can't help thinking about those others. I, I think about people like single mothers, single fathers fulfilling a mothering role that they are just were not prepared to fill. People who've lost children. People who struggle, women who struggle with infertility and their husbands. The parents of foster kids. That's a hard road to hoe because a lot of times the kids come with all kinds of damage. Emotional baggage that's really hard to carry every day of the year, which is why they have respite care sometimes for foster families because they can't carry that load forever. Um, they're anybody out there who fulfills the mother role in some weird way, like my biology teacher, who's pouring in encouragement, motherly love, attention. All of those people today, I see all of you, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's it's time that we recognize that motherhood is more than just somebody that manages to, by an accident of, of biology, to squeeze a little person out of their lady parts. Okay, so there's that. And today I want to recommend that you reach out to somebody who was a mother to you in some way, shape, or form. I'm going to try to reach out to Susan today. She used to show up at the ER every time that I had problems. And I used to have weird problems. And I didn't even think about this the last time she showed up and held my hand <laughs> through the ER. I'd had an accident in Lowe's of the stupidest nature. And I hadn't even thought about it until Dr. ER Jordan Wagner started talking about Steve-O and, and Jackass. And a, a stunt that Steve-O did where he went down a pile of fluorescent light bulbs and cut himself to bits and smithereens. I was in Lowe's one day and looking for a special light bulb. I had the box in my hand. I'm looking at the box. I'm reading. I'm looking at the light bulbs for me. I'm not thinking. And a lady ran her electric cart, her hover round on my foot. And I'm pulling on my foot, screaming, because it's quite painful to have that heavy thing on your foot. And... She finally rolled off my foot after I screamed and pulled along uh, what felt like an attorney. But I'm probably, I'm sure it's probably just a few seconds. And then I fell backwards into a pile of light bulbs, a giant light bulb display in Lowe's and emerged with like 10 zillion tiny little cuts and rushed out of there to go to the ER, which was kind of comical because the ER doctors are more worried about the 10 trillion tiny oozing little cuts and they were the fact that I'd broken some bones in my foot and had torn a ligament or two. So that was an interesting experience but during a lot of those times Susan would show up and hold my hand until Jim could get there because he was with his work he wasn't always around of course and he you know that's you have to make a living for your family. Men's entire self-worth and a lot of men is tied up in their job and how much of a provider they are. And you know me, I don't really like gender roles. I don't like traditional gender roles. I'm not a fan of you-know-who, um, biblical gender role guy. Because of circumstances beyond people's control, like the father, who's now the mother, who's having to learn how to comb and braid his little girl's hair. There are people forced by no fault of their own into all kinds of nurturing, mothering-like type roles. We love you guys. It doesn't matter if you're reluctant, you're broken, you're happy about it. This is a day to remember those people. And I'm going to try to reach out to Susan in a while. I know where she's at. I've got her email address and just see how she's doing. Because she performed a vital function for me when my own mother was many states away and my husband was working. 
Okay, you guys, I'm going to go. I love all you guys. I love you mothers, you almost mothers, you um, fathers that are mothers, single mothers, everyone who's ever had that nurturing role, whether they liked it or not, whether they were able to do it or not very well. I hope that somebody out there appreciates you today on your special day. I am getting ready to go stuff my face with a cheeseburger that they serve on grilled cheese sandwiches. It is out of this world. Probably take me three meals to eat it because it's huge. And uh, that is my day. I might squeeze a plant or two out of Jim. I always like plants. Not much on cut flowers, but I love plants. Y'all have a great day.